so now that the closet is mostly situated except for the faces, um, we're gonna start building our pantry area. And we've actually decided to put a little tiny like eight inch broom closet in right next to this. And so there's gonna be um, three of these walls here. So one kind of for either side of the pantry, which will then create a little nook for the broom closet and then one for the other side of the refrigerator. And so when we made this wall here for the side of the closet, we went ahead and like, before we installed it, we traced that door onto three more sheets of plywood for each of those walls so that all those walls would be identical to this because the profiles are all gonna be connected by all the face framing. So they all kind of had to be the identical profile in the front, which was all based off of the pocket door, all of that. So um, we, we just cut out what we had already traced, but the only difference is that this, this wall is actually gonna be sitting in here under this furring strip. So in order to um, now cut it to the right height, we just kind of put it in here next to the furring strip and I'm just tracing this along the furring strip so now we can um, go back and recut that and reposition this under the furring strip where we need that to go. We'll do the same thing for the other side of the pantry here and also for the refrigerator. It'll be the same process for all three of those but we're going to go ahead and get started just kind of with a little broom closet area for now which should be fairly simple getting this there'll be um we'll have to put like a backer piece in it get everything all screwed and pocket screwed together um and it's literally just going to be like this tiny little space that we can just kind of barely you know fit an arm in and we'll have um in in here we'll have a uh, you know one of those like little broom holder things so we can just kind of slide this in attach it to the wall we'll probably already also be able to fit some other cleaning supplies and things in there but you know a broom a swiffer a dustpan things like that will all be tucked neatly away in a little cubby right in this space so we're getting started on that now All right, so we're getting ready to install this um, wall here for our, this will be the other side of the pantry as well as the wall that encloses the broom. This is a broom closet. Um, so what we've done is we've put a, a wall in the back of three quarter inch uh, plywood and we've pocket holed both sides so that it grips really well to both sides and kind of works to sandwich this door and hold it in place. The problem is it's going to be really difficult to get a screw gun in there and so we've got this little guy which attaches to the screw gun and that should give us enough reach to be able to drive in there and drive those screws. So now that we have the wall screwed in at the floor and at the back uh, we're going to start finishing off the little ceiling pieces in here, um, which is just like we did in the closet with the four inch strips of the half inch ply that we chamfer on the edges to make sort of our own little fake tongue and groove. Now you'll see we already put the bottom piece in and again, um, this is what we're doing all over the bus is the very first piece of that we are screwing in to leave ourselves access to the wire chase and the rest of it uh, will be glued and brad nailed into our furring strips. So we're gonna get going on installing those. It's super hard to video. We can't really video in here while we're doing it because our arms basically take up the whole amount of space. So we will just show you uh, once that part's done. All right, so there is the ceiling all put in and this wire is just kind of like tucked through this little gap up in here. This is the um, the network cable 
that is going to be, it's going to come down and our bathroom light switches are going to be like right on the other side of this wall. So that wire is going to come down and it's going to be hidden. You're not going to, because it's going to be behind a face frame. So it'll just kind of be secured down here and tuck through to wire up our light switches. So the last thing that we have is we have to secure up here and we're gonna probably put like a little angle bracket to secure the top in place so that doesn't rattle. Kind of like this one on the other side. We'll just do that up here. And then we're going to install a, like a little broom holder thing in here, which we wish we could have done before we put this wall up, but Amazon didn't get it delivered in time and we just wanted to go. So um, we kind of have the line that to hold, you know, so we know where we want to put it, screw that in. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put like a little rubber mat down on the floor since um, that's just our subfloor down there. We're just going to put a little rubber mat that'll be easy to kind of take out and shake off and clean off. Um, but other than that, that's kind of the structure of our little broom closet there. So now we're gonna get started building our pantry, which is this space right here. And um, we're basically building it out just like we did the closet and the little broom closet and all of that. But we do have a few additional kind of obstacles um, to work around in this space. Number one is the window, obviously. Um, so we didn't want the wall, the back wall, to be pushing flat up against the window. Well, first of all, it can't because of the rubber gasket. Um, it would kind of be bumping up against that rubber gasket, but we don't want that for a couple reasons. We want, you know, some a little bit of air gap in there. Um, but also, if we ever have to replace this, win this window, we want to be able to have a little bit of a gap back there to kind of be able to work this rubber gasket in from the outside. Um, if we ever, hopefully we never do, but if we ever have to replace the window, we would have a little bit of space. So to account for that, we just build ourselves some spacers where we could attach in through the metal um, all the way down. So the wall, the back wall is going to sit about an inch back from where the window is. Um, oh, side note, we actually did tint these windows. If you guys remember back to when we had these windows replaced um, they are laminated safety glass that were already had like a gray color to them but because so much of this window is going to be covered by our pantry and our refrigerator we wanted it to be really super dark from the outside so that you can't see the back side of all of our cabinetry in here and so we went ahead and tinted um, both of the windows across from each other with um, a 5% VLT tint. So um, they do look a little bit darker than probably last time you saw them. So the wall's gonna sit there. Um, obviously you can see kind of mess of wires coming in. This used to be the refrigerator vent. We closed off that refrigerator vent and then put in some, um, just some wire feeds from outside. So we've got our, like our solar wires and our actuator wires, our camera wires we're also going to have wires for like our um, antennas coming in here we still haven't put those in so those are going to feed over here and over into the next cabinet above the refrigerator um, but you know we have to as we build out the ceiling we have to deal with this and then kind of the last big one is the old vent down here from when there used to be a propane fridge here we decided that we wanted to leave access to that vent. Um, we're not having our refrigerator here, we're having it one space over, but we want that vent to be usable. If you remember in the video we did where we kind of did a walkthrough of what our interior layout was gonna be, we shared with you at that time that we thought this, like the lower part of this cabinet would be where we put a litter box for our cat. Um, we shared with you that she was like anciently old at the time, 
almost 22 and she ended up passing away just a couple weeks after we shot that video um, the day before her 22nd birthday so we don't need it for a litter box at right now but we want to have that that vent available if in the future we ever do want to get a cat again or anything we kind of have that space available for the original purpose that we made it also we are going to be putting some fans in for our refrigerator and our technology cabinet for all of the electronics and to be pushing hot air out and it's going to come down and out through that vent so all of those kind of obstacles to say like our back wall is only going to come down to about here um and so we're leaving that space open so other than other than all of those the shims working around wires working around the vent we're building out the walls and the back and shelves and all of that stuff the same way we've done in our previous videos when we built the closet and the broom closet and all of that um so we're gonna get started on putting this whole thing together So next step is in installing this wall is drilling a hole here for that big bundle of wires to go into the tech cabinet. So we're going to do that plus cut um, some holes where the fans, so there'll be three fans that'll kind of work as exhaust fans uh, to go along the bottom. So we'll cut there and cut this and then hopefully this wall will then be ready to go in. ceiling um, kind of insulating as we go and we've got the first few little slats up but now we've hit the point where we've got all of our wires coming in and so in the next slat we've drilled some holes for all of these to feed through and but what that means is we now have to just go we got to go disconnect all of those because all of those are currently connected so we're going to go disconnect all of those so that we can feed them through our holes to get this next slat installed. Alright so for all the planning that we do we actually kind of forgot to do the outlet in here. So there's going to be a microwave in here and we wanted to put the outlet on the back wall and it would have been a lot easier to cut out if we had thought about that before we put it in, but we're gonna do it now. It's not that big a deal. So we've marked out the square where the outlet's gonna go, and this is for a microwave. And then we already have the wire run here from down below. And so we're just gonna feed it through and wire it in. All right, so we've got the outlet installed. It's all wired up and um, it also daisy chains back into the charging station. Um, so one thing that we wanted to address is 
We have a technology cabinet on, on the other side of this. There'll be the technology cabinet plus the refrigerator, and both of those things generate heat. Um, and so what we're doing to try to mitigate that is we're going to take advantage of having um, this vent to the outside here, and we're going to use these little fans. Um, so there'll be a couple of them mounted here that'll push air out, and so that'll create a vacuum in here. And so there'll be three of them mounted here, so you can see our three cutouts here. So these are 120 millimeter uh, PC case fans, um, and so they'll pull quite a bit of air. So the ones we're looking at will pull, I think, 200 CFM each. So that's quite a bit. So that'll be 600 CFM for the three fans. Um, so anyway, um, so we'll pull, we'll, they'll, they'll pull air out of the, out of the bottom of the refrigerator where the compressor is and also out of the top of the technology cabinet because there's going to be a space behind the refrigerator and we're going to force air down. So we're going to force air across the components and then down the back of the refrigerator and then this will suck the air out and then finally we'll have fans that push the air out to the outside. And so also our microwave is going to sit here and so there will be holes in the back of that also so it'll also pull hot air kind of out of that area as well. And so there, of course they'll all be microcontrolled so they'll be part of our home automation stuff and we'll do a PWM kind of like the LEDs where we, um, where we made them brighter and, and dimmer with, um, with the MOSFET boards. We'll use those same kind of boards to power these fans because these fans can be really loud when they're on full power. So um, if, they don't, if they only pull a little bit of air, if we can keep the, the heat out by just pulling a little bit of air, we'll be able to tune those um, you know, using a temperature probe and stuff like that so that they won't be super loud. So that's our hope. Anyway, so that's what we're planning for, and that's what these weird things in the corner are. So they're going to be kind of a, a vent or a channel for air to come through. All right, so we are working on our shelves, and we built all these shelf supports. Um, we're basically building them kind of like we did in our closet, except for they're not adjustable, um, and they have to hold a little more weight with like cans of food and like bags of flour, things like that. So. We, instead of like just pocket screwing them in or doing adjustable shelves, we decided to just do like the shelf support. So these are just one by two poplar and screwed in. And these two top shelves are recessed a little bit because um, there's gonna be a cabinet door coming from here to here. And so we wanted these two inset so on the inside of the cabinet door we could put like some spice racks or you know we could attach things inside the door um, and then when the door closes there's room. So the top two are recessed. Um, these, this shelf, this is all going to be open so there won't be a cabinet door down here. Um, this will be open because this is our where our convection microwave oven is going to go and you'll see when we install it on this shelf we drilled two big four inch holes on the back of that shelf um, like Juan was talking about so that we could suck the air out from the microwave vent it outside um, and then there will be another cabinet door um, for this bottom cubby down here um, so I think that's it we're going to go ahead and get started installing our, our we have four shelves these top two also have a, a trim piece with a lip on it. So, um, and this shelf will also end up having a lip on it because the face frame for the cabinet door will provide that lip. But we did put like a nice big, it's like one and a quarter inch above the shelf. Um, so that, you know, as we drive, food doesn't fall out. So I think that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and start screwing these all in.